In this video, I am gonna talk about different theater stage layouts, different kinds of stages that you might perform on as an actor. I'm also gonna give you a little bit of advice on how to act differently on these different kinds of stages. And I'm going to tell you about all of this in stages. <laughs> I'll be right back. Hey there, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. My name is Doug Fall, and this is Augmented Actor, where you come to augment your acting career with tips, tactics, and tech, and love. So let's get started by talking about some of these different stage layouts. The proscenium. So this is the most common kind of stage that you will see. It's generally what people think of when they think of theater or musical theater. They think of a proscenium stage. The stage is facing the audience. There is a frame around the stage that's called the proscenium arch. It doesn't have to be arched in its shape, but it is a basically the picture box frame that frames the theatrical event. And that can house a curtain or a drop that um, hides the backstage area and there are several layers of wings and wing space and things like curtains and set pieces can fly in or come in from the sides or rise up from the ground and they create pretty little pictures in this little picture box. It's like a little window into the story that is being told. Often in front of the proscenium arch is a little apron where you can play scenes in front of the curtain and then often an orchestra pit in front of that, although not necessarily. Now, the cool thing about this is that set pieces can be flat. They can be painted to look like they have three dimensions. So you can layer all these set pieces in and create a really elaborate looking set, but it only looks good from the front. So when you're an actor on one of these sets, you're only concerned about your performance as it is facing the audience. It's very presentational style of acting when you're acting on a proscenium stage. Now there might be a balcony or even two balconies, maybe three balconies. You have to be able to project your voice out to those people way in the back row. Be careful not to upstage yourself. When you look at other actors in profile, you wanna make sure that you're kind of cheating out a little bit so that people can see your face and hear your voice. There's often a lot of distance between you and the front row of the audience, so projection is still important. Additionally, you're going to be using the standard theater terms to move about and stage a scene. So downstage, upstage, offstage right, offstage left, that kind of thing. Next up, the platform or the end stage. This is very similar to a proscenium stage. There's no proscenium arch, there's no frame around the stage, but it is raised up on a platform. So it's basically just a platform at one end of the room. The audience is still facing the stage, stage is facing the audience. So all those same things that apply to a proscenium still apply. The only difference is there's generally not a lot of scenery. There's definitely not off stage, so off stage is just means off the platform. So you step up onto the platform and you're on stage, you step off the platform, you're considered off stage even though you're still visible. Now an end stage doesn't necessarily have to be on a platform. It can be flat on the floor. All that's important to understand about an end stage is that it's on one end of the room and the audience is all facing in the same direction. So you might find this kind of configuration in like a banquet hall or a cafeteria that has a stage set up for like a school dance or a stand-up comedy show or uh, uh, an assembly of some sort. Now on the platform stage, you're usually a little closer to the audience because these are usually set up without um, an orchestra pit and an apron and all that stuff. So you might be a little closer to your audience. The audience might be a little bit smaller. They're usually not in a theater proper. Next up is the thrust stage or the three quarters thrust. Now a thrust stage is when the stage extends out and there is audience seating on both sides of the stage as well as the front. So it's also called a three quarter thrust. And this can be an arched stage that has sort of audience seating in an arena style around the stage, or it can be an extension of a proscenium arch. So everything that's in front of the proscenium would uh, be part of the thrust. The Old Globe Theatre in, in London, that is an example of a thrust stage. For an actor performing on a thrust stage, you now have audience members on the sides. So it's less important that you face front. You can talk to an actor on the side like this. You can, yes, Doug, now go away. Now thrust stages tend to be a little bit smaller in size than most uh, proscenium arch stages. Projecting to the last row of the house isn't necessarily as important as um, having the volume so that, so that when you speak one direction, you can be heard clearly 
by the people that are seeing the back of your head. Shows on a thrust stage are going to be staged so that the pictures look good from all three sides. Therefore, set pieces need to be painted on at least three sides. You're still gonna use the upstage, downstage terms like normal, but things like moving downstage might not necessarily mean moving forward. It might mean moving downstage over to the side, moving downstage over here, that kind of thing. So it's a little bit more tricky. Now a variant of the three quarters thrust is the catwalk. We're all familiar with this from fashion shows where the models walk down to the end of the runway and then back. And it can also have a T in front so that the models can go down and then move left and right. Now I haven't seen a lot of theater productions that use a catwalk. Um, generally it's for like drag shows or fashion shows or bar kind of shows where they're trying to show off a costume or a piece. Now one of the things you gotta be careful of is falling off the platform. These platforms are often narrow and you know when you're walking down these things and strutting you're likely to strip up or fall off or bump into somebody that kind of thing. Even though technically the audience is only on three sides of you as you get further down the catwalk you have audience that's behind you as well. So if you're playing scenes on there you're gonna be mostly profile along the catwalk and then turning out to the audience for various asides. Catwalks bring the actors right up close to the audience, so it's much more intimate in style and presentation. Now, kind of a very end of the catwalk is when they create a catwalk in front of an orchestra pit, a platform that moves around the orchestra pit and actors sometimes parade around in front of that. You see that sometimes on the Academy Award shows and things like that when they want to bring actors closer to the audience. It's always fun to perform in these kind of things, but again, there can be some risk of falling off or running into people's handbags and whatnot. For a limited time, I am offering free subscriptions to my YouTube channel. All you gotta do is go watch this video on YouTube, scroll down a little bit and click the red subscribe button and the notification bell, and you get access to my channel absolutely free for a limited time. Another kind of stage layout is the profile stage. And this is basically where the stage splits an audience into two halves. So this is kind of like how a basketball court is arranged. So you have one team on one side, one team on the other, and they're watching the action in between. Here, the stage can be much wider. In fact, you can actually perform in a basketball court. But it's important here that your staging is addressing both sides of the house at the same time. So often you'll see dance routines where the dancers split up and face both sides of the audience and then cross over to the other side, break up your lines so that they send the, uh, the energy toward both sides of the house. Next up, theater in the round. Now, theater in the round doesn't mean that the stage is actually round. It can be, but oftentimes the stage is square and the audience is on all four sides. Your stage is in the center of the room and the audience completely surrounds the actors. Set pieces need to be fully realized on all different sides. They usually can't fly in or fly out or leave the stage. There's no wing space uh, to escape to. And lighting is gonna come from all different directions as well. So that's something to get used to as an actor. Generally, there are four seating sections of audience with aisles in between called VOMs. Now a director of a production of Theater of the Round is going to want to stage his actors often with their backs facing the corners, the, vom the VOMs, the aisles so that they can still be seen profile from any direction. But anytime you're on stage, you're gonna be moving around and changing the direction of your focus. If you sit, you're not gonna be sitting in one place for very long, otherwise somebody gets the back of your head for that whole scene. Now, when you rehearse a show in theater in the round, you're not going to be using the standard terminology for staging. So you're not gonna go downstage because there is no downstage. Instead, you're gonna say, move north, move west, move east. You're gonna say, go to the uh, northwest VOM or go to the VOM by the window. There's gonna be different language for how you stage pieces. When you're on stage, there's no hiding. You can't fix a, a costume piece without being seen. You can't turn and make a face to another actor. You're seen from all different directions. And so you've gotta be constantly on. Now these theaters tend to be very small in size, and usually very intimate. So you're usually just a few feet away from the first row on on all sides around you. Also, that means that you don't need to project as much or be overly presentational in your in your acting. Theater in the round definitely brings the actors in. It makes the production much more intimate and much closer. They're some of my favorite types of shows to see. Now, a bigger version of theater in the round is the arena stage. 
Usually these take place in large arenas, but the arena can be a smaller space as well. Now the same rules apply to theater in the round. You have to play to all sides. However, you arena stages, you will generally be mic'd and you have to have clean, clear diction and you have to really project almost to the point of yelling, shouting so that you can be clearly heard. But at the same time, there will often be video screens capturing the action so that you can be seen and people can kind of hear what you're saying by reading your lips and that kind of stuff. Generally, you won't find yourself in this kind of thing unless you're like singing the national anthem for a sporting game or doing a halftime show, but it's quite a fun experience uh, to do an arena show. Next, we have an open air theater. This is when part of the theater, usually the ceiling, is exposed to the outside elements. Uh, it could be the back of a theater. I've seen some theaters where behind the stage, there's a park. Open air basically means part theater, part open air. The Old Globe in, in London is a, is a perfect example of an open air theater as well. We also have theater in the park or outdoor theater. This is similar to an open air theater, except that there are no walls, no ceilings, rarely any lights, rarely any sound. You may have a stage or a platform, but you're usually in a park and everybody in your audience, including the actors, are outside. So you really have to watch out for the elements, the wind, the rain, the snow, the pooping pigeons, barking dogs, the sirens going by. And you gotta be really good at projecting and drawing attention. Uh, often your entrances and exits will be from way across the field, through the trees, or down the little riverbank. The next kind of theater layout is a cabaret style theater. This is basically where everybody is seated in the audience at various tables and the action of the show takes place in and around those tables. There may be essential stage location where scenes can happen, but oftentimes the action will pull audiences focus into different directions. Usually dinner theater, murder mystery kind of things take place in these shows. Sometimes circusy type shows take place in these environments. A lot of bar theater is cabaret style. Now when you're acting in these shows, you're gonna be really up close and personal. You might even be serving your audience their meal or their drinks while the show's going on. You're gonna have to listen to a lot of clanging and ambient noise because people are rarely quiet in a, in a cabaret setting. Again, it's kind of like working in theater in the round. You have to sort of make sure that you're always moving, that the audience can see you. Spotlights might follow you around the room as well. And you gotta watch out for uh, objects and people and waiters and waitresses moving throughout the space and bumping into things and stepping on purses and, and uh, cell phones ringing and all that kind of stuff. So it's not my favorite way to perform at all because it's a, a lot of distractions, but you learn how to deal with those when you work in those kind of shows. Another kind of stage layout is the site-specific or immersive theater stage. And this is basically when you take any kind of non-traditional space and turn it into a theater space. So that means like you could take an old warehouse or a house that's been a, an abandoned place, or you can work in a mall or a train station. So a good example of this non-theatrically is a, um, an escape room. So basically it's just a room that's been turned into a theater space, so to speak, with all sorts of stuff going all, all around. Now these kind of shows are called promenade shows because often the audience promenades with the actors. They, they walk along with the actors, they move from location to location often, and then maybe a little scene will play out and then they'll move to a new location. And these can be super immersive, super fun. Oftentimes actors are disguised as audience members, often audience members are asked to participate uh, in the drama, and it, it creates all sorts of fun elements. So this is very much very intimate, very close. You don't need to project at all. You don't even hardly need to wear makeup. Next up is the black box theater. Basically, you'll find these in college and education settings and some small theaters. Basically, a black box is often a black box with a black floor, black ceiling, black curtains hanging all around. You can configure a black box stage to be any of these other stages. You can make it a uh, theater in the round. You can make it a proscenium stage by building an arch. You can make it an end platform stage. Anything's possible in these things. However, these shows tend to be smaller in scale, less about set and more about the actual acting, and they are very intimate, up close. You don't need microphones, you don't need fancy costumes and makeup. You just get in there and uh, enjoy working on a piece. They're great for workshops and auditions and rehearsal spaces and things like that. Well, I've taken up about enough of your time right now, so watch some of these other videos and remember to hit subscribe because it's free right now, this week only. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.